You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. Tonight, a lot developing in the state of Montana, including this. One of the victims in a March shooting that injured a Montana Highway Patrol trooper has died. We'll have the latest. Plus, man versus wild. Four Montanans rescued. We're going to take you to the Gallatin River and a cliff in the Little Belts with what kept search and rescue crews busy. But first, a complicated series of events surrounding a shooting in Shepherd. And tonight, new details outline what took place during that shooting, the motive, and why police are still looking for another suspect in the case. Well, tonight, police say they're still searching for a third man involved in an early Monday morning shooting that left a man and teenage boy with bullet wounds. This after earlier today, a second man was arrested in the case and already in custody is this man, 40 year old Gregory Allen Johnson, facing two counts of assault with a weapon. As a suspect remains on the loose tonight, we are learning more details about what led to that shooting and how a Shepherd family hunkered down to take cover as bullets went flying. MTN Zoe Zandora joining us now with more on that. When I arrived on scene at Custer Avenue and 2nd Street West here in Billings, I filmed this footage of the deputies arresting someone who Sheriff Linder says is a second man in connection with the Monday morning shooting on Bees Lane and Shepherd. Now, this man did have an injury when he was located that was possibly a bullet wound. Linder said there were no shots fired during the arrest and the injury does not appear to be life threatening. Now, diving deeper into the shooting scene yesterday, court documents state one man was shot three times in the right arm, right side of his chest, and in the back. The second victim, a teenage boy, was shot in the arm. The man's wife and their two-year-old child were also in the home during the shooting, along with the teenager's girlfriend. Now, the one unidentified victim named Johnson as the shooter and described his vehicle. The man's wife says she heard bangs on the front door and later someone entered the unlocked back door with a gun. Her husband exchanged gunfire with the intruders multiple times. After reviewing surveillance video from a neighbor, deputies saw what looked like a flash coming from the home, then three people running out. Other videos showed flashes coming from the house and striking the fleeing vehicle. Johnson also told deputies that the first shots came from inside the home and his two companions fired back. He said he fired his gun into the air and then he stashed one of the guns at his home. The deputies are still searching for the third man. We will keep you updated as we learn more. All right, and uh, we've got more on this. Questions remain tonight after Billings police officers were forced to make an arrest at gunpoint. All of this happening as you can see right in front of a local high school. Witnesses told police they saw occupants in the vehicle waving a rifle out of a window. Well, officers' guns were drawn. Three females and a male exited that car in the westbound lane on Grand Avenue, a pretty busy scene. All were handcuffed initially, but we're told the females were later released. Some students at Belgrade High School are facing discipline tonight after a threatening video surfaced on social media, sending the school into lockdown. The Belgrade School District called police at one o'clock today about the threat. The video making threats against other students. So high school was put into a shelter in place mode and tonight the Belgrade Police Chief is commending the district for reporting so promptly. New information tonight as one of the three victims in a March Missoula road rage incident has died. 52 year old Julie Blanchard died Monday on the way to the hospital for respiratory complications in Washington state. The Chelan County coroner said Blanchard suffered cardiac arrest. The March 14th shooting killed Shelly Hayes, critically wounded Trooper Wade Palmer and left Casey Blanchard, Julie's son, a paraplegic. Blanchard's family will donate her organs and we're told an autopsy will take place after that. A man is safe tonight after being rescued late last night from a cliff's edge in the Little Belt Mountains. That man was seen hanging onto a tree root after sliding on loose ground while climbing. Well, crews determined specialized equipment was needed, so members of Malmstrom Air Force Base were dispatched to help, and a helicopter lowered him to safety. Well, the man was not seriously injured throughout the ordeal. 
Well, tonight we're learning new information about river conditions in Montana. In light of a recent river rescue on the Gallatin River, search and rescue helped three people who became trapped while rafting. A woman trapped in the water for an hour suffering hypothermia. Two men then were also discovered stranded upstream. Now search and rescue officials are taking this time to remind all Montanans how quick moving water can be dangerous. Water deserves respect regardless of where you are. It looks like the river, it looks like all the other rivers, but it's not. That's a really dangerous stretch. Big cottonwood trees, big rocks, nasty strainers. It's a really hazardous place. And tonight, a reminder, a reminder to always be prepared as conditions on the water can change so rapidly. Well, experts are cautioning the water is high, it's cold, it's moving at dangerous speeds. Knowing where you're going and mapping out your course, all important things to do to stay ahead of the unknown and having also the proper equipment, that's important. The water and the wind together can make you colder than you think you're going to get, especially um, if the clouds take a turn and, and cover the sun, it can get chilly. So gear wise, especially in early season, making sure that you do have insulating layers just in case. And remember, always bring that life jacket can make all the difference and a helmet also can be really helpful if you are in rapids. New details tonight on an unsolved case in Flathead Valley as police have identified human remains found. Those are of a missing Spokane man. Corey Flanagan was reported missing in May of 2017 and a search began after his vehicle was found unoccupied and crashed near Rose Crossing. In April, human remains were found in a wooded area. Police have positively traced those remains back to Flanagan, but this case still remains under investigation. A project aimed to bring awareness to Montana's meth epidemic is taking shape in Great Falls and it will come to life on the silver screen. The project is called Two Sided Coin. It will eventually be a full length film showcasing the devastation of meth and shine light on resources for stopping the addiction. The casting call was recently held for actors and a movie trailer will be released sometime this summer. This is a whole community problem. It's going to take a whole community solution, you know. So our goal with this is to really get the word out in a way that we're offering something that is a little different, we think. All right, in the movie trailer, it is um, going to be used to grow some awareness about the issue. Production, though, for that film, it's probably going to start a little bit later this year. More discussion surrounding the future improvements to Montana Expo Park in Great Falls. Commissioners plan to revamp that venue after a 2013 study found that Great Falls could benefit from a multi-purpose event center at the fairgrounds. This updated version of the study will focus on possible locations for a livestock zone. And other questions came up at a recent meeting, though, including how the new center would affect parking. There's a lot of these venues that are out there in the state of Montana that people are driving from all over hell and back. You know, when Paul McCartney came to Missoula, I know Missoula is a great place, but so is Great Falls. They sold 30,000 tickets, and they were renting spots, dry camp spots in French. Because <laughs> everybody was going. So these venues that get to be this large, I mean, we have to look outside the box, and we have to say, if we do build it, people will come. Organizers of the future improvements are hoping to have something on the ballot in front of voters in November of 2020. Montana Governor Steve Bullock will make his third trip to Iowa to campaign for president. And this weekend, he is traveling to western Iowa for an eight-stop schedule. Bullock is trying to qualify for the upcoming Democratic debates. The governor made a pitch to film production companies touting Montana as a great state with film tax credits. The industry accounting for nearly $3 billion in direct spending just last year. Tonight, Montana hotshot crews are preparing for an early morning flight to help fight massive fires in Canada. A Bitterroot crew will join Helena, Lolo, and Flathead firefighters in Great Falls before heading out. The teams will spend 14 days stationed in Edmonton, and Bitterroot fire officials say everyone is pretty eager to get to work. We have Canadian firefighters come down here a lot when we're under extreme situations in the States, so yeah, we're happy to, to head up there and help them when, when they're in need. And the Alberta fires already burned more than 7,000 acres, or 700,000 acres, I should say, of land. It's a lot of land. Almost all of the Bitterroot hotshots are making that trip. 
Lewis and Clark County moving forward with a plan to increase the size of the Bird's Eye Rural Fire District as a way to decrease response times. The proposal will transfer 100 properties from Lewis and Clark Fire Service to the Bird's Eye Fire District. Both fire departments support the change and leaders say adjusting boundary lines will put Bird's Eye closer to homes in Skelly Gulch and so they'll be able to respond much quicker. This wasn't just cooked up. This was something these guys have worked on for a long time. They're willing to take on this responsibility and uh, it's going to make a lot more sense for those uh, more rural areas so that uh, you're not actually passing through different jurisdictions to get to the one that needs to be that needs to be uh, protected. The commission set a public hearing for July 9th and more than 40% of property owners have said that they do support this change. New information tonight as Montana wildlife officials say chronic wasting disease has now been discovered in Libby. An affected white-tailed doe was found within city limits. FWP says people should be on the lookout for a deer with uh, an illness, sometimes an elk or moose. They're oftentimes seen drooling near water sources. Chronic wasting disease causes organ damage and is transferred through fluids to other animals. But humans and pets and livestock are not impacted. Still, though, officials are taking some precautions. People taking carcasses that are um, have CWD and depositing them somewhere else where we don't. Um, so the human vector moving animals across landscape is one of our big concerns. And hunters should be careful not to eat animals that appear sick. 26 cases of chronic wasting disease were found last year in deer on Montana's eastern side of the state. As always, if you see an animal that appears sick, contact your region's FWP office. Still ahead on tonight's MTN 9 o'clock news, when a Montana family found what they thought was a strange looking rock in their backyard, they never expected it would be entered into the Smithsonian. We'll explain soon, but first, hey Bob, how's the weather looking for Montana? We're going to talk about a series of cold fronts that will be moving through the region. One that will take us from very warm and hot stuff all the way down to very cold and wet stuff.